Blue skies, a landscape photographer's nightmare. But when you get them, you just have to work with them. Now, as you just saw, I was photographing the Storjic mountain. That's what's behind me right there. Because it was completely clear, I decided to zoom right in to the mountain peak and catch it just as the last wisps of light uh, fell on the mountain peak itself. The sun went down further over there and as it did there was some nice soft warm light on the peak itself and that's what I focused on today. So well now we'll go into the uh, light, the digital darkroom so to speak and we'll look at processing that image. So here we are, just a few photos taken from this relatively uneventful evening. Blue skies rarely produce uh, interesting scenes to photograph. And when that happens, you sometimes just have to wait around a bit and choose your moments. And that's what I did in this case. While the sun was high and the light was strong, I just let my kids play down by the lake. Now I could have come around here and photographed this mountain when it was bathed in lovely warm light just before the sun went down below the horizon. But I have many shots like that because quite frankly I visit this place quite often. And so, you know, I didn't want just another shot like that. So I thought best to wait a little bit, wait till the sun's gone down a bit. Then we wandered around the other side with the kids and then that's when I spotted the last wisps of light falling on the mountainside here and that's what really interested me the fact that the there was this last little bit of light streaking down the mountainside here and down the hillside here and I think that made a slightly more interesting image and that's what I went for so I took a few shots now uh, as you can see I pulled back a bit here to capture the light falling on the hillsides too, the forested hillsides and then as that waned as you can see here the light started to wane on the hillsides but it was still here on the mountain peak I then decided to change my composition and then go in a bit closer so out of these three shots I think the close-up I quite I like this one yeah it cuts off the rest of the uninteresting part the light had disappeared off the hillsides here and it was just really falling here on the mountainside so I, I came in close for that one so I think out of these pictures I I like this one, the close-up one, and I like this one here. But, so I think I like this one here more though, so I'm going to process this one now, and I'll probably process the other one quickly too, but for the purpose of this video, we'll just process this photo. So here we are, opened in Adobe Camera Raw within Photoshop, and already it looks much better than the Raw Preview on the Windows Explorer, of course. So, as, as always, I've got it in Adobe Vivid, and I don't think there's that much we really need to do. Now, this light down here really, really is nice. Um, I think we can tweak the blacks down just a touch to add a touch more contrast on the hillside here. Maybe take those whites up a teeny little bit. Now, um, we can pull down the contrast, the, the highlights, sorry just a touch not too much if we pull it down too much i think it's making that sky look a bit too dark so we can pull it down just a touch here and i think i'll probably prefer to play with that more when i open it in photoshop itself now when you've got mountain sides the texture button seems to work nicely if we whack up that texture button we whack it up just to give a, a good effect uh, I'm not going to take it up that high, but the if we tweak that texture button, that's nice, see? If we take that up to about 15, we undo that, you can see a slight difference. The texture button seems to work nicely on mountains. It really brings out the texture of the rock face and, and everything, so that seems to work quite well. Give it a touch of clarity, I think. That was a very, very clear day. So um, I think the dehaze tool is not really needed. But sometimes it works just to give it a touch because it gives it a little bit of um, a nice boost in the contrast a bit. So plus two, just a tiny bit. And maybe the vibrance here, just a touch. 
I think that's enough to bring it out nicely. Now what I'll also do here is maybe try to deepen the blue in that sky a little bit. And the way that I can do that is to come down to the color mixer and select the luminance and come down here to the blues and I can darken the blues just a touch. Not too much, we don't want to take it down too much. Because if we take it down that much, yeah, there's a lovely blue sky, but it, it looks unnatural. So it's, I think just take it down maybe 10. That looks nice. That looks nice. So we've got a bit of uneven lighting here because it's much brighter. Obviously the light was coming from the side here. So we don't want to do it too much because then this darkens this area too much and really starts to make it look unbalanced, I think. So that's good enough. Might take this black back a touch. And I think that's good enough. Yeah, see, not much really needs doing. Just a little bit of tweaking here and there. So we'll now open that into Photoshop. And in Photoshop, now I'll do a bit more fine adjustment in the highlights. So we'll take that down to five. See how that looks. I think that's just made that mountain peak stand out a bit. Maybe down just a touch to two points, not too much. Just a teeny tiny touch. Just help bring that out a bit more. Less is more. We can see what we can do with the curves. There we go. Help bring the texture of that mountain peak out just a touch. I think that's good. And that's it really. That's good enough. So let's go to my saved templates for my file info. As I said, I've shot this view many, many times, so I'm going to have uh, something saved here. Uh -huh. Okay, so okay, I've got Predvor Winter Storage, and I've, I've shot it in winter. Now this wasn't winter, so. I can, I can use that as a template and then just modify it. Storage each mountain at sunset. And then I can say something here. Last light on Mount Storage each in the Kamni Alps at sunset. Seen from Yezero Janava, Black Lake in Predvor. So, and again, I can come down here and remove. Okay, there's, there's a little bit of snow there. So I can keep snow, but it's not winter. So I'll remove winter. Sky, sunny sunshine. All of this is all here. That's all good. Storage each. Yeah, we've got Predvor. Predvor in there. Here's a little Janava. Uh, Black Lake and the keywords. Redvor, because that's where it was taken from. Mountain, mountain peak, add a few more keywords there to make that. That's about right, that's good. So that's nicely keyworded. So I now save this as a TIFF. Always save my images as TIFFs, because if I ever want to come back and edit them, I can edit the TIFF and not the JPEG. You should never edit your JPEG. Your JPEG is your final image that you output. So if you ever want to come back and edit again, you don't want to edit the JPEG. So it's always good to save the TIFF. They could come back and edit the RAW, but the thing is there, you've made some adjustments in Photoshop. When I've made adjustments in, in Photoshop, then if I come back and edit the RAW, then I've got to make all those adjustments in Photoshop again. Also, once I've saved my image, I'm going to go through and I'm going to check for dust spots. And again, if I edit the raw, then I've got to go through and do all the dust spots again. And this is the most laborious part of editing your image and it's certainly not something I want to repeat. So that's why I always keep a TIFF on file if I ever need to go back and edit. So we scroll through and see that everything is nice and sharp. There are no dust spots and everything looks good at a hundred percent. Sometimes an image, when you bring it up on screen, it looks sharp, 
but then when you zoom in at a hundred percent you see that it's not there's been some uh, vibration due, due to the wind camera shake or sometimes the conditions are such that uh, it's hazy and you cannot everything is not quite as clear as it seemed so that's done that's saved now my image is finished so I will convert to 8 bits I convert my profile to sRGB because I upload these to uh, the internet to my uh, pod sites my websites and uh, if you upload them in Adobe RGB it doesn't look very good the images the, the colors look faded on the internet so sRGB is the best color profile to use when uploading your uh, images to the internet so I'll now save that as a JPEG and that's done so it's a mountain photo so I'll add this to my mounting gallery on Smugmug so it's very easily done we'll upload that now I'll upload it again also to Fine Art America so again very quickly done sorry and I'll also put this on another pod I use photo for me based in the UK uh, it's also a really good place to sell your images so I have an account with them so same thing there just simply uh, set up your account and I'll upload it to my portfolio fairly straightforward I sell a fair few photos on here too so it's well worth it you can add a small watermark here which is quite useful and upload multiple photos together just like anywhere else so there you go so that's uploaded to Smugmug that's all done that's now there at the bottom so that's done so again it's everything's imported nicely there so I'll just come down here add it to my mountains gallery here general that's done over here I can select the category so these are uh, categories created by photo for me not by me so we'll just call it landscape and again it's imported the title description keywords a primary keyword it picks one out from the first one I usually delete that put it back and I'll write something in here mountain sunset as a primary keyword you can put in three important keywords here as it says write three keywords location subject focal point okay I'll put Slovenia um, I can call it Alpine mountain that's most likely something people might search for and uh, maybe a mountain peak something like that that's good enough and that's it now I'll save my picture that has now been added to my portfolio so if we view my portfolio there it is it's there now and it's available for sale on photo for me it's available for sale on uh, Fine Art America and on my smug mug website so there you have it hope you found that useful and it just goes to show that even on a, a day where there's zero cloud blue sky there's always something that you can photograph so thanks for watching uh, if you're new to this channel please subscribe and if you enjoyed this video please give it a like and check out some of my other videos thanks for watching bye bye